Hi, I'm Ian Anderson, and in this video I'm going to talk about how to deliver to multiple aspect ratios with anamorphic footage from a GH5. Alright, here we are in Final Cut Pro. I've got a number of source shots and a few different kinds of delivery aspect ratios. Now let's start really simple. If you are shooting widescreen and delivering widescreen, you could frame a head and shoulders shot like this fairly loose, or maybe a bit tighter. That's okay, either's fine. If you're shooting widescreen and delivering widescreen, then frame it however you want. You might want more space to put uh, overlays or little pictures or text on the sides, or you might just want to take up more of the frame with your subject. Either's fine. Now the anamorphic mode on the GH5 lets you shoot a truly enormous 4 to 3 aspect ratio frame. If you look at the information, it's 4992 by 3744. You could do that at 25 or 30 frames a second. Now that's a huge amount of data. It is recorded in HEVC at 200 megabit, and you'll need a pretty grunty Mac with Final Cut 10 to be able to deal with it if you don't want to transcode. But it does work, and you can play back smoothly. Now, the reason you would record in this big mega 4 to 3 mode is to allow reframing in post. Final Cut lets you choose spatial conform modes of fit or fill for a good starting point, and I'll show you each of those here. So this is fit, you get black bars on the sides of your shot. But if you move to fill, then you can fill the frame. Now, if you just activate the anamorphic feature without reframing, then you'll get big space above your subject. This is probably something to avoid. If you do need extensive space for reframing, then sure, maybe consider it, but there is a better way. Framing loose does mean you can use these transform controls to reposition things, but if you frame loose, then you pretty much have to reframe all the time. So instead, if you frame your 4 to 3 shot so that you've got a common top, that is the space between the top of the frame and the subject's head remains relatively constant, and I'm comparing to the widescreen shot here, then you can have an easier time. Now in widescreen, when you turn on fill, that means you will need to move it down, but that's all you need to do. You shouldn't need to scale anything. It's just a Y position to pretty much position it at the top of frame. All right, so that's widescreen delivery. What about your square or vertical delivery? They're a little different. If you are delivering to square, and I have to confess I'm not really a fan of square delivery, then if you put widescreen footage in square, you waste a ton of space. Uh, it means you've just got huge titles above and below. So zoom it in, and yeah, look, that can look okay. A tighter frame, if you use that original, slightly tighter look, then that can look pretty tight here. And um, I think maybe you want to think about framing a little bit looser to give yourself the flexibility. Now, if you shoot anamorphic like this, you are still going to waste space when you go to fill, and you will still need to scale it and move it to get a decent-ish frame. Now, this does give you flexibility. If you want the flexibility to, you know, make more room or less room for titles, to move things around, then sure, maybe you want to keep it fairly loose. But the common top idea actually works really well. As soon as you flick to fill, it's done, and you don't have to do anything else. You get the frame you were expecting, with simply the edges removed from the shot. In vertical, the story is much the same. If you have a widescreen frame, it's going to be really, really small in the shot. And when you turn on fill, you lose so much of the edges, it becomes a really, really close-up shot. If you'd framed really tight, it becomes super uncomfortable. Um, I really don't like this at all, personally. Now, if you shoot in 4 to 3 with a loose uh, kind of framing, then you end up with a loose frame again, and you'll have to scale and change position to get a decent shot. But common top works again. So common top is the way I would recommend shooting if you're going to use the 4 to 3 anamorphic mode. So if you want to learn more about Final Cut, uh, please check out some of the stuff I've got on Ask Video and Mac Pro Video, and I'll have more videos soon about all kinds of creative topics. Hope that's helped. Good luck. See you soon.